What's up guys, it's BT here, and recently we've been so hyper-focused on the Hall Effect craze that's been going on within the gaming space, but I want to take a look at some of the other areas of gaming keyboards because there's a lot of interesting things that are going on. Now, I had two keyboards in my queue. One is the Asus Azoth Extreme and the Black Widow V4 Pro 75%. So I figured why not do a battle between the two because they do share a main similarity. They are both wireless and they are both now coming with gasket mouse, something that we've only seen and custom keyboards up until about this year in gaming keyboards. Another thing that makes this an interesting battle is that this keyboard is $500 and this one is $300. So there's a $200 difference between the two. So the Asus has to do a lot of things right to warrant that $200 difference. So let's see if they were able to accomplish that today. In the box, everything is pretty much the same. Keycap pullers, a few extra switches, cable, and a wrist rest. Razer has more of a plush leatherette feeling, whereas Asus has a silicone one with a metal bottom. I was expecting the Asus one to snap in place with a magnet, but it just slides up against it. But Razer has that magnetic snap in where you just slide it up and it snaps into place to keep it from sliding around. Overall, I do like the plush, more forgiving Razer wrist rest, slightly more because it allows your wrist to sink in instead of being on a hard surface. So just from a build quality, standpoint of the case the asus azoth is way better it's using an all metal design with a carbon fiber plate which is not cheap it has more of an industrial gamer modern aesthetic look to it instead of just relying on rgb to carry the gamer aesthetic you're either going to like this or you're going to hate it they also have these removable nipple feet to change the height of the keyboard i've never seen anything like that and it gives this keyboard a somewhat premium feel now on the razor we're not seeing a full metal chassis we're seeing a top metal chassis which is nice to see aluminum but on the bottom side we get that same plastic that we've seen in their previous huntsman and black widow keyboards they are using an fr4 plate which i do appreciate it's no longer those steel plates that are just not that great to be honest if you aren't familiar with the fr4 plate it's between an aluminum and a polycarbonate feel somewhere in the middle there i really like this on customs and again i really like it here they also made it white so it bounces off more of that rgb so in the casing you see a difference in philosophies here where they are focused more on the aesthetic, the casing, the etching, the beautiful design to carry that modern game and aesthetic. Here, they're relying more on the RGB. You got the flanking RGB on the side to carry the gamer aesthetic. Now, I prefer this. Some people might prefer like the RGB look and not care about the casing, but I think this case looks great. The Razer has the two level kickstand feet, which you can just flip up and down. You might actually think that that's a little bit easier because you're not gonna have something that's removable or something that you can lose. Both have case foam, plate foam, but what sets Asus apart is that it also has the PCB foam as well that separates the switch from the PCB, which will lead it to having a better sound overall, but don't worry. That will be sound tests later. So for the casing, the overall build, the design, obviously for $500, this one better be the winner and it is this feels like the better built keyboard this one is lighter but again it just feels cheap with that plastic on the bottom side i would love to see razor's take on just an all metal keyboard like an ultimate black widow ultimate right i would love to see that here so another feature that these keyboards have is this OLED screen. I don't know why we need OLED screens on keyboards, but we have them, so we're gonna talk about them. Asus went all out on their OLED screen and made it touch screen. I don't know why we needed to be touch, but here we are. And I think that added a lot of price to this keyboard, which wasn't really necessary, but literally they are putting almost a one and a half inch phone screen on your keyboard. Yeah, it's nice to show off to your friends, but in actuality, you're gonna be using the button and the trigger on the side of the keyboard for most things and just swiping between screens if you want to show like a different graphic and something like that and honestly like i said it's just overkill for what was needed here come on we'd rather have a cheaper keyboard let's be honest at the end of the day on the keyboard you'll be able to see things like the multimedia information battery level you can do custom animations and you can show your cpu temperature there's a lot of things you can do with this but again i just think it's overkill at this point now the black widow v4 pro screen is just a normal screen shows you basic information it's just black and white it's not as crazy. It just shows you basic information and you can choose your like profiles and things like that. Now it also can show other information like your CPU. So it's not as feature rich as the ACES, but again, do we really need it to be? Really? I mean, if I'm wrong here, let me know down in the comments. Now is this screen worth an extra $200 price point? I don't think so. I would much rather them cut the cost, cut out the touching, 
have the colored screen still, which is pretty cool, and cut down that price just a little bit. We don't need touch screen on that. We're not gonna be touching this every day like our phone. Now, one of the main reasons why I wanted to make this video and why I was interested in both of these is that both are gasket mounted. They are bringing over custom features now to gaming keyboards. Now, I would not think that Razer would be in that mindset to make a gasket mounted keyboard and Asus is coming out of the gate trying to prove themselves and they put in a gasket mount, but it's really interesting to see here and how they both attempted to do it. Gasket mount, in my opinion, is one of the best typing experiences that you can possibly have when it comes to any type of keyboard. It gets rid of sound vibrations, it's a lot more flexible, and it just gives you a nice feeling underneath your fingers, which is what, you know, keyboards is all about. Now let's start with the Asus gasket mount and how they attempted to do it. They did it with a leaf spring underneath the plate, as well as pour on strips around the keyboard so this is between the bottom and top casing very interesting that they decided to do both but what this allowed them to do is give us this little switch on the back which switches it from hard to soft so you can have varying levels of gasket mount resistance just from a flip of a switch and that's something we haven't even seen on custom keyboards and hell we might even see it after they learn about this keyboard and it might actually be a determining factor why you pick up this keyboard now razor took the typical approach they just used the poron strips into the case on the plate and they are just bouncing up and down so there's that easy enough one is just using a typical gas mount this is using a leaf spring with a really cool design now i will say that even with the switch this keyboard the razor is bouncier compared to the asus keyboard even on the soft setting so if you really love a bouncy gasket mount then go with the razor if not, if you just want something that is just soft, it's gonna sound good, go with the Asus. Overall, actually, I'm really impressed with the way both of these companies went about doing their gasket mount. You know, we've seen in the past where companies just do like a fake gasket mount and have all these screws still. I love that these are just plates sitting in a case which is what a gasket mount is. But overall for the gasket mount, for the innovative feature, I still gotta get it to the Azoth. <laughs> Got me obsessed, got me obsessed, got me obsessed. All right, so getting into the nitty gritty of the keyboard, we got the orange tactile switches, the Gen 3s coming from Razer, and the ROG NX mechanical switches from Asus. Both of these keyboards are hot swappable, so if you don't like the switches, you can switch them out and replace them with a switch of your choice. These aren't Hall Effect switches, so you can put normal mechanical switches into each one of these keyboards. The Razer switches, to my surprise, feel fantastic. They're tactile with a nice light bump, but very, very smooth overall. I was expecting them to be trash, to be honest with you, just because of my past experience with Black Widow keyboards and their optical switches, but these, dare I say, are incredible. And the lube job they did on them is perfect. There's very minimal stem wobble, has a box design to keep the keycaps from wobbling. Razer has really stepped up to the plate with these switches. The screw and stabilizers on Razers are actually fantastic. They lube these with some Crytox 205 grade zero lube. Since these are screwing, you'll be able to replace them with the stabilizers of your choice, but man, I think Razer did a phenomenal job. But man, I feel like this is a true game changing keyboard for Razer as they did their stabilizers right. It's not a rattly mess and you can tell they focus really on sound. They said they focused on sound before and it still sounded rattly. This one, it's like all coming together for them. So this is a moment for Razer. Now the ROG NX mechanical switches are linear. Asus also went with the box design. They went palm for the stem and palm for the bottom housing and polycarbonate for the top housing provides an ultra smooth keystroke that again is very stable and very smooth. Asus did a really good job factory lubing these and on the stabilizers they've also done a phenomenal job. The more consistent stabilizers are on the Asus. The delete key, the enter key, the space bar, the shift all feel relatively the same. The tuning on them is just far out better. Although they are plate mounted, I'm okay with it because they've tuned them almost to perfection. Now for the switches, I really love Razer. They are the winner for the switches. For the stabilizers, I gotta give it to Asus. So this one, this round is a tie, in my opinion. Or if you wanna separate them, this is the switch winner and this is the stabilizer winner. So we've talked about the internals of both of these keyboards, we've broken it down. So let's drop a sound test so you can see what each one of these keyboard manufacturers have done. And I'm gonna put in one of my favorite keyboards to Bauer from Omnitype and compare it to one of my favorite customs and one of my more expensive customs as well. So let's take a look.
All right, so the Azoth, as you can tell, has a nice thocky sound with it. It's very balanced. It's like a, like right teetering on the line of like clacky and thock, whereas the Razor Black Widow is more of a clack, especially with that tactile switch. It's more tactile. The Razor Black Widow does sound a little more hollow compared to the Azoth. Um, so in that area for the sound test, I got to give it to this one. This one holds its own against my $1,000 custom. So shout out to Asus, whoever tuned this, whoever was responsible for this. Shout out to you because it all came together. All right, so both of these keyboards are wireless. The Azoth is featuring 8,000 hertz pulling rate, whereas Razer's only doing 4,000, so the latency is gonna be better here. Now they do have a switch on the back of both of these keyboards where you can do wired, where you can do 2.4 gigahertz or Bluetooth, it's up to you, which is also really nice. Now you'll be able to hit 1,600 hours of battery life with the Asus, that's about two months of continuous 24 hour usage, but of course you're gonna be sleeping, taking breaks from gaming and doing computer work, so it should last you, I'm guessing, about three months before you have to fully charge it. The Razer on the other hand can go up to 2100 hours, probably because it doesn't have to power a crazy OLED screen and it is running 4,000 hertz pulling rate instead of 8,000. You're getting higher performance with better battery. This has less performance with less battery. So just makes sense. It just adds up that this is the winner. So when you break down the hours, you're getting better performance for more hours with the Azos. So it is the winner for battery life and connectivity. Okay, so we're gonna check out the Armory Crate right now. And as soon as you open it, you're you know, greeted with this. Oh, you gotta put a wallpaper, like, nah, we're good. And then you gotta log into your Aces account, but what if I don't wanna do that? You can go to the keyboard. Now they do have some binds that you can do in here, as well as the speed tap, right? But when you go to click on the speed tap, this is what happens. can't turn it on so they have it in here but it's not easy to do now in the next one you can control the little knob that they have on the keyboard you can control things like system the media track keyboard brightness OLED switch lighting then you can go to the OLED you can do a music mode you can do your own custom which is cool uh, that's there you can do the lighting basic stuff shows you the power as well and then you got the lighting and then you got the firmware so yeah they have the features but the the software just doesn't really like work like i'll go back and try it again see if it'll turn on i'm not sure if this feature isn't ready or they just have it there for marketing to say that they have it but as of right now as soon as i try to turn it on I get this, it's off. So yeah, needs work. Now here we are in Synapse, right? Now for the same thing, we go to Snappy Tappy or Snap Tap. And look, look how easy it is to just turn on and off. Whereas on the Armory Crate, took a long time to load and it wouldn't even turn on. Now we got the pulling rate, everything just works how it's supposed to do. So I think that Armory Crate really needs to work on their software. Here you can just see the difference in terms of the software and how well it works. And when you're paying $500, you really want everything to just work seamlessly. So for this round, Synapse is the winner. Overall, both keyboards are very impressive. For $500, you know, comparing it to custom, it holds its own and it has gamer features, has that OLED screen that we're probably not even gonna use. This one, $300, I, I kind of feel like it might be a little overpriced just in general because you're not getting a full metal build. I really would love to see Razer's take on a, you know, a full metal keyboard, an aluminum keyboard. I know they can do it. They have the materials, they have the backing for it. But stepping back out into the gaming keyboard world outside of the Hall Effect keyboards, companies are starting to do some interesting things with their keyboards. But this is a battle and there has to be a winner. And if you couldn't tell, it is the Azoth Extreme from Asus. And it should be for $200 more. You're getting a better built keyboard. You're getting a really cool innovative feature with the gasket mount. It has better keycaps. The switches are almost 
to the level of these. It's got the higher performance. The battery life is also exceptional. It's just a little anemic in the software area and the features. And that's something that obviously can be fixed with software updates. So I would think that Asus needs to put more resources towards that and they will have a keyboard that can hang with even custom keyboards. Now, Razer, what they need to do, put PBT keycaps on here, put a full metal casing on it, not just rely on the RGB look that they've gone with. But a solid offering, they're doing a really good job with their switches, the screen, I don't really need a screen on these keyboards, but it is cool. I understand people do like that sort of thing, so I can't hate on it too much. But again, their screen is better. Both have really good sound, even compared to just a year ago, what we were seeing in gaming keyboards. Now the stabilizer done well, it's gasket mounted. So I love seeing where the gaming community is going and blurring the line between custom keyboards. So Azoth Extreme is your winner. Just wanna reiterate that. Um, if you have any more questions about either one of these keyboards, let me know down in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer. Until then guys, it has been your boy BT. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.